you guys already know, but I'm here to tell you that we get to have Kelly Hunt this morning. And so today must be raising the vibration. And uh, there's so much to say about Kelly. There's some of it right here. We could go on for the whole time just talking about Kelly's background and wonderfulness. But I'm going to skip that and go straight to Kelly. I would point out that last line. She's at work on a new release for 24. You're running out of 24, Kelly. You better get it out there. Go ahead. It's all yours. Thank you. All right. Good morning, everybody. You hear me okay? Okay. Well, uh, as ever, uh, I'm going to start with some music. And I, I will start by saying that new album is going to be coming out in 2025. And so I've written a bunch of things. Um, and we're going to be considering all of that for the new album. So anyway, here we go. We're going to start with some music. If you're ready, if you're ready now, you get ready, yeah, yeah, come on and go with me. Now, no hatred, come go with me, we'll be tolerated. Peace and love. To where there's total communication if you're ready. Now, if you're ready, if you're able, come go with me. Take me by the hand now. No disaster. If you're in, better get ready now. If you're able, come go with me. Take me by the hand now. Come go with me. So everybody, come go with me. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, great to be back with y'all. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be talking about raising the vibration, which is already happening here with this group. And a uh, matter of fact, it's happening all around the world as I speak. And I'm going to tell you, uh, give you a couple of examples of that here in just a minute. Socrates said, the secret of change is to focus all your energy not on fighting the old, but on building the new. Building the new. So it serves us to remember just how powerful we are as co-creators of our own lives. Because we not only affect ourselves, but we affect our world when we do. This morning, actually, during this service right now, there is a church that is led by Minister Reverend Darlene Strickland, who is a friend of mine. And Reverend Darlene was the minister here in Lawrence, Kansas, where I am, at Unity of Lawrence for many years. And, and for a, a time during that period she was there, I was a music director for a while. 
stepping in for um, someone who couldn't couldn't uh, participate in that way. And I knew then that she was extraordinary uh, as a friend, on a personal level, and as uh, a minister out in the world. She was very community oriented, and she still is. <clears throat> So her church is located in Asheville, North Carolina. It's Unity of the Blue Ridge. And so, of course, when Hurricane Helene happened last week, uh, we were very concerned about many friends uh, in Florida and um, that whole area. But we were really surprised that Asheville, North Carolina, had been so deeply affected. So we immediately reached out tried to get a hold of her, and didn't hear uh, from her for a while. Because, of course, they had no internet, they had no cell service, they had no electricity, no water. And in her congregation, they have still only heard from 25 to 30 percent of their congregation. They haven't been able to locate everyone yet. But what Darlene has done in her extraordinary way to focus on building the new as opposed to focusing all the energy on fighting the old or what was happening. <clears throat> and of course, she's human, so it was it's happening and still happening around her. You have to focus on what's happening to be able to deal with it. But she did something truly extraordinary. She began to uh, anytime she would get a little cell service or someone would allow her to plug her phone in somewhere, she would start making posts on Facebook, A, saying, I'm okay, checking in with her congregants, checking in with her community, and reporting what was happening there. She was and is raising the vibration. So as almost as if a miracle they are able this morning to do a Zoom service in combination with a live service at Unity of the Blue Ridge in Asheville, North Carolina. And this only came about within the last day or so. It is truly miraculous noting that what she and everyone in that area in, in, in the US that's going through this is going through. And I want to read a little something to you. She would check in and say, it's day two. Here's what's happening. Day three, we still don't have electricity, but here are some of the things that are going forward. Well, this is a post that she made. And this was two days ago. And it focuses on vulnerability. She had decided that even though their home, she and uh, her family's home, had no electricity, um, she would be reaching out to as many folks in the community as she could. And this includes the entire community, not just her congregation. She's a minister, and she decided she wanted to help in a um, very visceral way as an on-site chaplain wherever she could, and to help organize um, those who could provide water, electricity, food. There are people who have gone six days with no food. Um, so I want to read something to you. She went to a community center where many people were being taken who had been rescued. There is a hospital that was had to be evacuated, and those patients, some still on oxygen, had nowhere to go, and they were brought to this center. And she decided to volunteer as a chaplain. And she, she says, as I visited with individuals, I could feel a sacred presence entering the space between us, simply through the act of their open heart sharing. What began as a simple conversation became a vessel for healing. The power of God already alive within them became more visible, more palpable, as they gave themselves permission to speak openly about their lives and to be seen and heard. Perhaps without even intending to, they touched on truths that could only come to light through honesty and vulnerability. 
At first, there was no need for prayer. We simply talked. As they began to tell their stories of fear, grief, bygone days, past experiences, and present uncertainty, I saw how much they had been carrying in silence. The act of speaking, of telling their truth, created an opening, and I would add to that, began to raise the vibration. For many, this opening brought tears. They hadn't expected to cry, but in releasing their words, they also released their spirit. After an extended conversation, the man who hadn't eaten in two days, who refused food, accepted food. He ate a sausage biscuit and drank apple juice. It was more than just a meal. It was a sign of life stirring within him again. Can you feel that? Can you feel how that begins to lift some of that burden? And it's an immense human burden that they're living through. In the act of conversation, he reconnected with something deeper, something sacred, the light of God, ever-present had begun to shine through the cracks of his sorrow and loss, bringing with it a spark of life. This is the power of opening up from a place of empty. We make space for God's presence to move in and through us. We may not be seeking God, but in the vulnerability of our heart, we find the divine is already there as peace, as love, as strength, as connection and healing. And she ends by saying, I don't know what today holds. Lord knows I do pray that I get electricity restored, but I can tell you this. It is truly possible for your soul to be completely satisfied in the midst of loss and longing. I'm going back to be a chaplain for a few hours today. Today we shall sing together. I love you, my friends. Talk about raising the vibration. I don't know about you, but I have never lived through anything like that before. And it took a choice for her to do that. She chose to go there. She also understands in... She has made this public. None of this is private information. <clears throat> that this is traumatic for her as well, and she is doing what she can to take care of herself. And as we saw before on the screen, we are fully human. We are fully divine. And she's one of the best examples of that I've ever witnessed. Now to raise our vibration a little bit more, the vibration of joy, I want to tell you another story, and it does not involve the heartbreak and grief of what's happening in Asheville. It involves a neighborhood wiffle ball team, a little baseball team, and many of you have seen this story and seen the video, but I was so tickled by this when it happened, and I read about it the next day. So a man is driving his car in Kansas City, Kansas, and he happens to see a neighborhood group of boys playing a little wiffle ball game in the yard. And this guy loves baseball, loves it. So he had a day off and he, was, he, he thought he would stop by and he got out of his car and he leaned over the fence where the game was. And these were boys of all ages uh, from third grader up through high school. And some of them recognized him and some of them didn't. And he said, hey, guys, can I play too? And one of the younger boys wasn't sure about that because he didn't know who this guy was. But the older boy said, guys, that's Salvi. It was Salvador Perez from the Kansas City Royals. <laughs> the team captain. He's the guy that raises the vibration and the energy, not only with the team, but with the fans. And 
Salvador Perez was stopping by to see if he could play <laughs> wiffle ball with these boys. So one of the kids ran in to ask his mom, who didn't know who this person was, and she came out and she couldn't believe her eyes. And they all said, sure, come on in and play. And if you've seen the video, you know that he got right in there. He was there for 15 or 20 minutes. He picked up the bat and he was going to, you know, he was up to bat. And we, if you're familiar with Salvador Perez, you know that if he actually hit the ball, it would go way over the houses in the neighborhood and they'd never find it again. So the little guy who was the pitcher got his wiffle ball ready to pitch to Salvi. Salvi got his bat put back in place. And when he pitched, he did kind of a slow motion bat and barely tapped that ball, just whoop. And he began to run in slow motion to the bases. There's first base. And he ran just fast enough so the boys could almost catch him. And it was a dear fun thing to see. And what I loved about that, he was having as much, if not more fun than anybody. So by now the neighborhood, uh, the neighbors are peeking out their doors and windows and coming outside and saying, what's going on? So the mom, who was uh, the little boy's mom, who was the youngest, she thought, well, I know what's going to happen tomorrow. These guys are going to go to school and tell their teachers, hey, guess who played ball in our yard? And the, and the teacher would most likely not know about it yet and say, yeah, yeah, sure. So she went out and took pictures and video. And she sent it to the teacher. And she said, hey, <laughs> tomorrow you're going to hear a story that's unbelievable. And it's true. And it's happening right now in my backyard. <laughs> so, and then towards the end of his time there, it was his idea, Sal Salvi's idea, to take a group photo, which I thought was very, very sweet. So he got the, all the guys together and took the photo. Many of you saw it in the Kansas City Star or saw it online, saw the video. And one of the things I love, he's got a big smile on his face, and so do the boys. And in the video, you can hear him laughing. You know, he's playing outfield with a wiffle ball, and he's just having a great time. So what he did in just following his, you know, bliss, was he not only <laughs> raised the energy and the vibration with his generosity and willingness to be, uh, to be present, he raised his own vibration, but everybody there, and now thousands of people have heard this story. Thousands of people have seen the photographs and the video, and it is continuing ripples of positive energy throughout uh, our world. I don't know how many people have seen this now, but I know it's a lot. And it's a gift. And this is a great reminder to me to allow myself to step into that role if I'm trusting my intuition and I'm knowing that it's mine to do. I've learned that growing up from, from both of my parents. Oh my gosh. If you feel that little urge or you hear that little voice in your head, your intuitive voice, your the voice of the divine that says, hey, pull over. There's a game going on. I might want to join in. I've got time. Wouldn't it be fun? Remembering all the while that it is not only about us, it becomes immediately about others. And what blesses one we know blesses all. So positive vibrations are high frequency thinking patterns and attitudes, emotions. Whereas vibrations that are low frequency make, allow us to not feel good. Have you ever been in the midst of a situation where something felt off? And in your body, you could identify that, ah, I kind of feel it in my stomach, or I'm feeling my shoulders get tense, or I'm feeling myself kind of brace myself for what's next. 
So the easiest way to identify a negative vibration is to be aware of when and how we feel resistance within ourselves, both within our bodies and our minds. What are we, what are we resisting? What are we holding at bay? Whereas positive energy and vibrations make us feel at ease. We feel physically and mentally at ease. There is an upshift and an uplift. We begin to literally feel better. So the high vibrations emotions are joy, love, gratitude, passion, peace. So every day when I read uh, Reverend Darlene's posts, she always includes gratitude. I'm so grateful, she says, that the electricity is now on at the church. I'm so grateful that we found so-and-so. They're alive. They're safe. I'm so grateful that I could cook food on my barbecue grill. We had something to eat tonight. I'm so grateful for the people that are coming together to help each other. This is powerful, advanced consciousness. And I honor that and I salute that. I'm not sure if I were in that situation what I would be capable of. I know what would be mine to do would be different from what is hers to do, which is a great reminder to ourselves, well, what is mine to do here? What can I do? Yes, I can see the situation is um, what it is. I acknowledge that now. What is mine to do? How may I lift my own vibration first? And then how may I assist and lift others as well? Gratitude raises the energy. You'll see an immediate shift. Observe the beauty of the moment. Let it just blow your mind. It blows my mind every day to think. The beauty of kindness, the beauty of compassion, the beauty of sharing uh, the, the, the grief and loss with someone, the beauty of vulnerability, the vulnerable place where we can be honest with ourselves and say to someone else, you know, I could use some help. I am hurting. I need to tell someone this. And on the other side of that, I'm so grateful that you're here listening to me. I'm grateful right now to be here with all of you, to be invited into this sacred space with a community that I honor and that I have come to love and respect. I'm grateful that there is anything I want to say or sing that you're at all interested in hearing. My gratitude is immense this morning. We woke up, we had electricity, we had water, we had uh, food, we were safe in our home. And I don't know about you, but I understand more deeply what a big gift that is and allows me to go forward in my day. So here are some things that have allowed me to stay present and understand what kind of energy and vibration that I am responsible for in the world, a gratitude list. I talk about gratitude a lot, and I know that I do. But it's one of the most powerful emotions that helps me and hopefully others with a vibrational shift. We normally give thanks when we, when we receive something, but if you feel gratitude out of choice, out of choice, your body shifts into receptive mode as the emotional signature of gratitude is positive. This is what makes gratitude so powerful. 
you choose gratitude and you begin to feel the shift. Right now, if we think of just one thing to ourselves, what am I grateful for? And it doesn't need to be a great big thing. What am I grateful for at this moment? Am I able to take a deep breath without pain? Do I have people in my life who love, respect, and trust me, who I can be vulnerable with? Was I able to eat and take in nourishment today? Do I have something, and this is a big one, something to give, to serve with? How may I serve? It feels wonderful to be able to give and serve others. In fact, it feels almost better for, to us, ourselves, than it does to the person receiving. And I'm, I know that it's great for them, too. But that raises our vibration. One of the things we can do as well is connect with nature. And it might just be as simple as looking out the window. It might be as simple as stepping outside and taking a deep breath. Or we might have the luxury of being able to take a walk in a beautiful place or get in a kayak and go down uh, a river or out on a pond or just sit quietly and listen to the birds or see an amazing sight of the mountains or a lake or the prairies, whatever that is in our world, or a cityscape that is beautiful to us where we can go outside. Nature is also very healing. Another thing that resonates with me deeply and is happening right now this morning is to surround ourselves with higher vibrational input. And this includes the media that we expose ourselves to. This includes the people that we surround ourselves with and that we knowingly choose to be with and to talk with and to listen to. Those things are very important. I've, I've decided that in my life, before I go to sleep at night, many times I'll read, but most times I will not be watching the news when it gets closer to time to sleep. We all know the news has a whole bunch of stuff going on right now, left, right, up, down, north, and south, and we want to stay informed in our lives to stay safe and to help others, but it can also get us tense and wound up and our thoughts get busy. And then when we try to sleep, we can't do it. Or I should say, I can't do it. So I've decided to step away from that early on in my evening. I stay informed plenty, but I sleep better without that. One of the other things we can do is to nourish our body. Like I said, and you know as well as I do, we are 100% human and 100% divine. So this human side needs some nourishment, physical nourishment. If somebody is needing help and is hungry, the last thing I want to do is, hey, let me talk to you about um, gratitude and raising your vibration. No. The first thing I'm going to do is say, are you hungry? Here, what can I help you? Here's some food. Do you need water? How can I help you? That body that we have has to be taken care of first. It's very hard to listen, and as a matter of fact, it's very hard to be grateful when we are hungry, when we are very, very tired, when we are thirsty and our body needs nourishment. Those things will help us raise that vibration and be able to think, then be able to be gra grateful, but not until then. You are needed Every one of us here is needed. And now is our time. This has become so clear to me over the last few years. When is the time for us to up our game, to uplift, to upshift? When is the time? What have we been waiting for? Nothing. We don't have to be perfect. We don't have to have all our little ducks in a row. Matter of fact, most people don't. They may appear so, but it doesn't mean that they do. But I strongly believe we are all needed, and now is the time. 
I want to quote one more time from Darlene's posts because she has been an inspiration to so many and continues to ongoing and will be ongoing. She not only keeps people informed of, you know, what is happening, but what is happening not in just her world, but in the, the world around her. She says, this was yesterday, it is, it is day nine, and we have both water and electricity at the church. Thanks to an incredible group of volunteers yesterday, we will be able to have a gathering tomorrow, which is today, October 6th at 10.30 a.m., which is 11, I guess it was 11.30 our time. No, 10.30 their time, 9.30 they started. Come as you are and bring your water jugs if you need to fill them. And thanks to a congregant, we will have hot food after the service. Bring your water jugs. How many times have you heard that said for a church service? I don't know about you, but zero times in my world. Bring your water jugs. We have water. Bring it. Doesn't matter if they're part of that congregation. Doesn't matter if they're members of that church. And guess what? What we haven't had for nine days, we're going to have hot food. Come, come, come. Gratitude galore and service galore. I'm going to end today before we go into a meditation by saying you are needed and now is your time. We are ready. It is righteous. It is time. So I encourage you to get comfortable in your chair or wherever you are right now. And take a nice deep breath. If you wish, close your eyes. Take another deep, slow breath. And we remember who we are in this moment. In the presence of the one In the presence of the true All is healed All is whole And all is well Take another deep breath, knowing that we are safe in the presence of the one. In the presence of the one, in the presence presence of the truth, all is healed, and all is whole, and all is well, there's only one power and one presence. of the one, in the presence of the truth, no matter what may be happening around us, 
We know that the divine is within each and every one of us. Available to us at any time. Despite outward appearances, all is healed, all is whole, all is well. And we breathe. And we release the tensions that we may be holding in our body. And we breathe. this presence of the truth. And slowly we begin to return to this present moment in our present environment. And when we're ready, we slowly open our eyes. And remember who we really are. We are needed. Now is our time. And with gratitude and presence, we walk into our day and know that we are equipped for whatever may happen today in our lives. to myself to focus on what I want, what is good, and not linger on what is hurtful and what I don't want. I'm not worried about tomorrow. Today I declare freedom from yesterday. Mistakes of the past Today all the things are made brand new And don't it feel good to know All is well and unfolding as it should I can change my reality just by changing as it should all is well 